In this knit time lapse, you'll be seeing me unravel this v-neck sweater. I'll be repurposing the yarn to knit something else because I wasn't entirely happy with how it turned out. If you'd like to see how this piece came to be, you can find the link down in the description. But moving forward, the reason why I'm unraveling is because I didn't like how some details turned out, like the center of the v-neck, the uneven tension, and the shaping at the underarms. If you can recall, I wrote this pattern on my own using my previous knitting experiences. So it's not a professional established pattern and because of this, I think it's even more important to make revisions before I begin. I started by remeasuring the piece to obtain some final dimensions. I really liked how the piece fit, so I want to make sure I can achieve the same equivalence. As you can see, the tension is not the greatest. I had to try really hard to get the fabric to look even and smooth, and this just took away a lot of the enjoyment of knitting it. So for my second attempt, I changed the needle sizes to a slightly smaller pair and knit a small swatch off camera. It looks okay here, but when I put it up against a darker background, I could really start seeing the uneven stitches showing through. I heavily debated in my head if I wanted to continue knitting a sweater knowing how this yarn knits up. Plus, I was worried I wouldn't be able to find this much quality yarn in this abundance and in this cream shade, so I decided to stick to my original plan and just knit a sweater. So here I am casting on the number of stitches I need for the right shoulder. After knitting across and turning, I placed stitch markers to start the wraps and turns and just continued knitting until I finished the right shoulder. The construction for this sweater is knit very uniquely and the first time I knit it, I enjoyed the end result so much that I decided to make my own pattern out of it. Now that I have both the right and left shoulder complete, I cast on some stitches. This is going to be the back of the neck. Next, I joined the right piece to the rest of the work by simply knitting across it. One of the biggest issues I have when knitting is not paying attention to my work. Here, I'm pointing out a mistake that I made. This piece has a sharp pointed tip compared to the other side, and this is because I forgot to do increases at the edge to help shape it. So I quickly unraveled this piece and re-knit it off camera. It didn't take long to complete, but this serves as a reminder for me to pay more attention to what I'm doing. I always fix loose stitches along the way once I notice them. You can see that I've already dropped a stitch and started re-knitting it up the ladder. But it's still looking a bit enlarged even though I'm really focusing on the tension and just trying to make it work. This really brings back the initial reasons why I began this unravel in the first place. Should I continue and struggle and not enjoy the process or do I not give up but just choose a better path? I thought it would be best to unravel to the point where the loose stitches began and continue from there. I didn't want to give up just quite yet. Later on that night, I reassessed my work against a black background this time. This was pretty much the moment I realized that I needed to change directions because the uneven tension is just so obvious. It would be pointless to continue on and pretend as though it doesn't exist. I have to say though, it was fun to test out my own pattern and to see if I actually made it make sense. The next day, I jumped into the project with a tubular cast on. I had this strong urge to knit something worthy and impactful, but at the same time, I needed a break. I ended up finding a pattern from Pearl Soho. 
After reading Pearl Soho's description where it said, an engaging project with a real feeling of accomplishment, I knew it was exactly what I was searching for. This is a free pattern, so if you're interested, I will link it in my description. I went with the scarf version because I wanted a quicker project. Pretty early on, I realized I made a mistake knitting the moss stitch. I also decided that I didn't like the bobbles and that I could improve the pattern for me by knitting the column of knits as brioche so it pops out more. With all this in mind, I unraveled everything and started over, and this time with smaller needles. After seeing how the cables looked, I felt it would be best to go for a tighter gauge. I know I've already gone back and forth between needle sizes so many times now, but this time I'm sticking to this pair. I managed to go a long way before making a major mistake. The top cable is shorter than the rest and I have to fix this. This is my first actual unravel so far since establishing the pattern. I did however tink back a stitch or two in between a few times before, but it wasn't much. At this point, I also wanted to be more independent and rely less on the pattern. I started counting the previous rows and tried figuring it out. It was about time I learned how to read the stitches so I could find my way back on track. I do prefer to knit intuitively even when there's a pattern, so I make attempts to memorize or at least understand the flow of the pattern so I rely less on it. It was also so refreshing to knit a smaller piece because it was much easier to fix mistakes. Once I saw an error, I could easily and quickly fix it because I'm not far from it. I noticed that when I knit bigger pieces like a sweater, I don't notice a mistake as quickly. I usually have to get back to the beginning of the round to finally see that something's wrong. So knitting this has been pretty effortless and fun because I feel like I'm not working so hard. Using a stitch marker as a point of measurement helps me see how much I've knitted in a session. It's also gratifying to see a bit of progress each time because sometimes it can feel like not much has been knitted or it keeps dragging on. So being able to physically see progress boosts my motivation and energy and also makes me feel more accomplished. If you've made it this far in the video, please give it a like. By liking this video, you help boost my content. Thank you. I started off by knitting with the fresh unused yarn, but now that I'm done with those, I need to start unraveling from the sweater. So I began at the cuff and seamed the two ends together using the spit splice method. Since I'm knitting directly from the sweater itself, the yarn is too kinked. It would have been better to wet block the yarn before knitting with it. But sometimes I try to keep going because I don't want to lose progress. But after getting this far, I realized that I should have just taken the longer but more wiser route. When I'm winding the yarn, I always try to maintain the original ring around my knee. This helps keep the yarn from tangling as I work it into a ball. The first thing I want to do after winding the ball is to attach it to my work. This way the split splice area has time to thoroughly dry before knitting with it. Knitting with yarn that has just been freshly spliced can create an enlarged stitch in that area. By simply giving it time to dry, you can avoid this. So if you've ever experienced the enlarged stitch effect before, then hopefully this tip helps. I was kind of waiting for this to happen. I made a mistake on this cable where I have two cable twists that are too close to each other. This serves as a reminder that I should always check my work from time to time to make sure I'm knitting something correctly. At this point, I've reached a decent length. I feel like most people stop at this point once there's enough to wrap around the neck like this. But I never really wrap my scarves like this. I usually fold it over to create a loop and then I put the ends in. I think it's important to be mindful of how you normally wear things when creating pieces. 
When knitting, you might feel like you want to stop at a certain point because you're eager to finish, but I recommend really assessing how you typically like to wear and style something. This way, you'll actually end up with a piece that you'll wear and love. ended up making the same mistake as before where I did a cable twist too soon. The weird thing is that I'm kind of glad this happened because it's forcing me to unravel this error but also the split yarn here. So by unraveling this section, I'll have the opportunity to fix the cable and the split yarn. I had a feeling that the width of the scarf was going to be too narrow for my liking but I kept telling myself that it would look okay in the end and that I should try something new because all of my scarves are pretty thick and full. I also rationalized by saying I'd make the dimension wider with web blocking but after trying it on I can see that this may not work because of the way the fabric drapes. As you can see, it sort of folds over itself when I wear it and this makes it look skinnier. In retrospect, I probably should have gone for the wrap. I think it would have given me the results I wanted. I was hesitant though because I didn't want to end up with a huge piece that would take forever to knit. I could have ended the video here and just let you all know that I continued the project off camera. But I feel if you've watched this far, then a strong ending should be given. I like this pattern because it has written instructions or a graph, so you can choose depending with what you're more comfortable with. It's well written, clear, and has all the details about knitting the cables and baubles, so it would be really difficult to get stumped. The piece is stylish, looks professional, and the fact that you can choose between a scarf or a shawl is great. On top of this, Pearl Soho has their own videos on YouTube that break down how to do everything, so tons of references to help. Overall, I like this pattern a lot and would definitely recommend it to advanced knitters. Here's how I would style my scarf. I have on an oversized blouse tucked in halfway for that effortless I don't care look, jeans, and black chunky boots that are perfect for fall. 
Next, I threw on my trench coat and topped off my outfit with the scarf. Literally, since day one of knitting this scarf, this is the outfit that I always envisioned wearing with it. Longevity is a very important core value in my wardrobe, and I'm glad I was able to repurpose an old sweater of mine and give it a new life with this cabled scarf. Through the pavement and concrete On a bridge you brought to me And I would hold you if it meant you wouldn't go Through the showers and the snow And all your 